channel if you're new here welcome thanks so much for watching my name is Hannah Olson and I live in Minnesota with my husband Bjorn and our two kids Sophie and Soren Sophie is three and a half almost and Soren is one today we're talking mostly about Sophie because I'm talking about homeschool prep homeschool games homeschool resources all sorts of things that I've been enjoying lately and I have a little bit of organization to do as well for Sophie this year we're doing a preschool level of the sunlight curriculum if you haven't heard of sunlight it's spelled S-O-N, light. So that kind of gives you a peek into the Christian background of it. But it is a Christian curriculum and it is a literature-based curriculum, which means it focuses a lot on learning through stories or reading and books. And so I love that. We all love that because our family really loves to read. But what I wanted to talk about today is a collection of resources or activities that I've found. I have not created these myself, but I am a huge fan of going out there and finding good resources that really fit what you need for your homeschool time. Before we jump into some of the resources I wanted to share with you and some of the games and activities I'm excited to do with Sophie, I wanted to share a little bit about myself and my background. I am new to the homeschooling um, atmosphere or the homeschooling journey. I was not homeschooled myself, but I am not new to the education topic. I am a licensed K through six teacher and I plan on keeping my license up to date even though I am a stay at home mom currently. I just, I, it takes a lot of work to get your teaching license and I just wanna keep it. But I am a trained educator and I worked in an elementary school for years before Sophie was born. For my real first teaching job, I I taught for a year as a third grade teacher. I was in a single grade level elementary school, which meant I was the only third grade teacher in that school, which was an intense experience, especially for your first year of teaching. After that year though, I saw an open position for something called a Title I teacher. So I applied for that position and I got it and it was within the same school district. Title I, at least in our school district, meant small group um, reading interventions, math interventions, things like guided reading and phonics work. And it was a dream job for me, or at least the most ideal teaching situation for me because I loved that small group atmosphere. You're working usually with between four and six kids at a time, sometimes one or even two if it's a special intervention that you need to do. I taught about 10 lessons per day, which meant I had about 10 groups of students rotating through my room every day. There were several other Title I teachers at the elementary school where I worked and Title I paraprofessionals as well. As a Title I teacher, you need to have a wide variety of resources for very specific skills that you can grab and use for various lesson plans throughout the day or when you're planning out your week. And something that really helped us was having huge file folder systems of we called them games because you can call anything a game for younger um, students or elementary students we really built up a large collection a whole kind of storehouse in a filing cabinet of games that we could use for lessons I'm always going to be a sucker for finding good educational games I mean finding online resources that you can print out laminate and cut out and store in file folders I have a good collection of different educational activities and games most of them we call a game that I am excited to use with Sophie in the future and I will be keeping to use with Soren as well. However, once a teacher, always a teacher, I think, because I cannot get enough of some of these games and I know technically I have the things I need for this school year, but the other day I was just looking for even more games so that I could bring some variety into some of the skills I wanted to work with Sophie on this school year. So now I've got a huge stack of printed out activities that I have not yet filed away or laminated actually I have a small laminator and I need to get those all prepped and put away because I want them to be stored safely and in an organized way so I know what skill set they're for so that was kind of a long intro but I'm bringing you along with me today to work on those um, activities but I just have a passion for finding good resources and I also have a passion for sharing good resources with you and it is fun to scroll through and look for games ourselves but sometimes we don't have the time and it's just really nice when someone else has has kind of compiled all the good games that they have found so that's what I wanted to do for you today 
All right, here is the box of a bunch of random stuff. It looks like trash, doesn't it? Um, I definitely need to get this project going because I cannot store things like this. I have file folders here. I have laminating pockets because I have a small laminator. Underneath, we've got all sorts of games that are printed out in order, except Soren stirred them around the other day, and that just kind of motivated me to get this project done because they cannot just be sitting here in the living room, of course. Before I forget, I wanted to share two resources right off the bat that have been super useful to me in my um, Title I teacher time and also for finding homeschooling games. And the two sites are called This Reading Mama, and I think it's thisreadingmama.com and The Measured Mom, themeasuredmom.com. So This Reading Mama and The Measured Mom have a lot of um, activities you can buy, but they also, if you sign up for their email list, they have all sorts of resource libraries of free printables, and those have been super valuable, and they just have high quality games. So definitely check out those two sites if you want a good starting place for finding some games that you can print out and play with your kids. This is my little laminator that I got off of Amazon and it works really well so far. I've only used it a couple times, but I can link it below. I don't know much about laminators, but this is the one I chose. Usually on Amazon I look for high reviews, but also not obscenely expensive, so um, that was this one. Let me show you a couple games that we made, we meaning um, Sophie and me. She really wanted to help, which is sweet because then as we were making them, we also played them. This one is called Pop Color. It has to do with popsicles and matching colors. That's basically the gist of it. I got this game from a site called filefolderfun.com. This game focuses on color identification or color matching and Sophie really enjoyed it. I just made sure to ask her what color each of these was as she was putting them together because she did it really quickly and we had to go through and just clarify each color. This one's a little bit tricky. It's like a cream or tan or beige, but other than that, it's a really nice game. So this one was from filefolderfun.com. I just chose to mount the page that had the bottoms of the popsicles to this file folder and that way I could just have these um, tops be the loose pieces. This one is called Cupcake Count and it's also from the File Folder Fun website. And this one is a really fun one. It's a little more of a skill set and a little more challenging for, I guess, a preschooler. So for this game, I just mounted the cupcakes with the numbers to the inside of this file folder. Then in a bag, I've got all of the cupcakes with cherries on top. And um, these are the numbers one through 10 and these Cupcakes have either one, two, three, all the way up through 10 cherries on top. And all the student has to do, the student, all my child has to do is count the cherries and lay that cupcake on top. So this is perfect for one-to-one -one counting skills and number identification as well. I also wanted to share a few um, manipulatives or other little items that are good to have on hand for some homeschooling activities or some of these games. These Unifix type cubes are perfect because you can hook them together for counting, but they can also be used for game pieces in a lot of these little activities. Dot markers are always great, although you have to be careful if they're extra inky because they can kind of smear, but they're good for obviously doing dots or just marking off something like a bingo board. I've got a whole bag of dice, which is a little bit of overkill here. We've got all sorts, <laughs> but it was a variety pack. I also have a set of these little plastic manipulatives. These are little plastic bears. They're really cute, and my son Soren even likes playing with them, but they came with some colored cups, which I don't have here at the moment. I think Soren actually took them somewhere, but um, they come with cups that are the same color as them, so you can really do good counting and matching and sorting with these little bears. And again, I'll link things below whatever I can. These flat little plastic chips are perfect for marking your spot in a game or playing something that's more like a bingo board. This sounds weird, but it's good to have a couple clothespins on hand because some activities you can mark your spot kind of on the edge of the paper by clipping. This is kind of a poor example because there's only a couple of them, but these circle garage sale stickers that you can get at the dollar store are super great for um, worksheets or games that you don't really need to reuse again and you want to mark your spot. Another thing that's really useful is a plastic um, pocket and these are pretty sturdy ones that I got from Amazon but you can slide pretty much any paper inside. It's kind of like a glorified page protector which you can definitely use for any of these 
printable games that I will show you today, but this is just another good way to protect a sheet of paper, whether you're playing a game or doing like a tracing activity, you can use dry erase markers on this too. So these are great. Another thing I wanted to share with you today, I actually talked about recently in our first vlog here at the apartment. So um, you can check out that video to really see Sophie playing with it. It's a set of little wooden number cards and it goes up, I think through the number 10. And it comes with these little wooden dowels up here that your child can put into each hole as they are counting that number. But this I found on Amazon. I love that it's wooden, it's really pretty. I found this game about weather and what to wear for different weather. And Sophie has really loved this one. We started off the school year with this sort Sort of game because it was more simple but definitely like life skills. These Kuman brand workbooks were recommended to me by a friend who homeschools, actually a couple different friends who homeschool, and I've really loved this brand. I think they do a fabulous job and you can see at the top here it says it's for age two, three, and four. It's just nice that they have activities or even workbooks that you can do with a two-year-old that are actually made for a two-year-old so you know you're not maybe pushing them way too hard but it's definitely developmentally appropriate. We have a cutting workbook by them too which is like my first book of cutting and it's so fun for Sophie because it kind of creates a little craft with each little creature or whatever it is you cut out and that one is for age two and up as well. And Sophie has little safety scissors that we've used for that skill. We have a lot of math worksheets. Well, it's a workbook that I ripped all the pages out of so I could subdivide it for each week of the school year, but it's called Mathematical Reasoning Beginning One. So this is the Beginning One workbook. Obviously I didn't tear this first page out super well, but Sophie loves these workbook pages and I've really found them to be engaging and they just cover a lot of mathematical reasoning topics, you know, things like number and operations and measurement and comparing sizes of things. So it's been really fun for her. I found this Write and Wipe. Uh, this is the Alphabet one on Amazon and it's Scholastic brand. It's been really fun for Sophie. It's a more recent purchase that I've made. This is what it looks like inside and it's just a sweet simple way for your child to work on various letters and tracing but it's something you can kind of take on the go too. I feel like the Target dollar section has done a really good job with preschool level flashcards in the past few years so whenever we go by if I see any flashcard sets that we don't already have I try to pick those up. We actually have a dinosaur flashcard set too but that's not so much a preschool skill but Sophie loves it. We also have one called Opposites and that's actually in my diaper bag right now because I took it with us on an outing with friends so we would have something fun to do if we had to wait in line somewhere. We love the Opposites one. It has really engaging pictures and I talk about it more in a recent vlog so definitely check out some of my recent videos if you want to see more of that. Mighty Mind is another really great um, activity. This actually came with Sophie's Sunlight Preschool Level curriculum set this year. It's super fun. I'm not going to probably open it and explain all of it right now. I love how it says makes kids smarter and keeps them busy for hours. Um, I haven't found that to be completely true, the busy for hours thing, but I definitely do recommend looking into Mighty Mind. So that's something you can find on Amazon too. While I'm waiting for the laminator to heat up, I just wanted to mention the activities I'm showing you today are not ones that I'm doing every single day with Sophie. It's not like we sit down and do tons of pages out of workbooks and then move on to the write and wipe book and then do tracing, you know, finger tracing and then a game. We really rotate through the type of activity that we're doing each day that we do homeschool. I just never want it to look like I'm saying we do all of these things every day. We definitely rotate through different types or styles of games and I just love having a wide variety of games to pull from so that we keep everything fresh and fun and make sure we're rotating through a whole wide variety of skills for Sophie as well. In case you're wondering, by the way, why I'm sitting here in what appears to be an empty dining room or an empty rug area at least, I am in the dining room of our apartment. We just don't have a kitchen table yet and that is a whole story that I share in my most recent video um, or the video before this. It's my get it all done video. So that's a whole interesting thing but anyway that's why I am on the floor over here because I have the room. This is from filefolderfun.com. This one is called Octopus Colors and it involves color matching as well as pattern matching, which is just a fun little kind of a warm up activity that I would do with Sophie, like not the meat of the day. She loves all ocean creatures, so this will be really fun for her. But we've got octopus heads here and then their tentacles. I also found some size sequencing games, so you know, putting objects in order of size, whether from small 
to largest or largest to smallest but this one is along with a polar animals theme so i have little booklets and stuff too that i'll cut out but these are from a site called fun with mama i'm going to laminate these little arctic foxes then they'll be ready for sophie to quickly sort they had a few different themes on that fun with mama site too but this is the polar theme so that's why it's an arctic fox i think i have some other animals here over in the box that i printed out too i don't have a ton of color matching games but this one that looked too cute to pass up this is from filefolderfun.com and it involves apples that you match with little are those upside down uh, that you match with little worms that are the same color wanted to share something that has been really fun for us to do lately and also super valuable in terms of Sophie learning the letters of the alphabet and their sounds. So all the credit for this idea goes to Katie Votberg who has the account called Now That I'm a Mother. So definitely go follow Katie. I love Now That I'm a Mother and they have a podcast called Now That We're a Family and I just I love everything that she puts out. She's one of my favorite moms to follow but she is teaching her kids at home as well and they have these little sheets of of paper with the different letters of the alphabet on them and you just add one whenever you feel the child is ready for the next letter. So these are our letter sheets and we started this fairly recently but it's just been really effective and super fun like I said. But the reason they are so crumpled looking is because you actually lay these out on the floor just in order at least to begin with and your child can jump on each one. So I tell Sophie jump on the letter A, a, a apple. Jump on the letter B. What sound does B make? B, B, bear. And then we can mix the letters up and play little games with them. For instance, she could sit on my lap and then I would just say, okay, go find the letter A. And then she has to go grab that sheet of paper. But this has been so fun for us. It's so simple and so doable. Anyone can do this at home with their kids and you don't even need to print anything out for it. It's been such an engaging way for Sophie to um, get her energy out as she's learning the letters. And yeah, I definitely recommend trying this even just for fun as a little activity in the afternoons after nap time or something. And if you want to see this in action, check out Now That I'm a Mother on Instagram. I can link that below as well. But Katie's Instagram account is Now That I'm a Mother and she has a homeschooling highlight in her Instagram stories. So you can see her doing this letter activity stuff with her son and daughter. And then another part of this this alphabet practice is actually practicing writing the letters of the alphabet. This is a page where Sophie practiced writing the letter B the other day and she did several pages of it and recently I got her an unlined notebook so that'll be even more fun for her. But then once you feel your child has mastered forming that letter or writing that letter or at least gotten really comfortable with it, then we get to add to Mrs. Caterpillar who's up on the wall over here. So this is Mrs. Caterpillar as we call her. And once your child has gotten really familiar with a letter and has been able to write it pretty neatly, or at least, you know, whatever you feel is appropriate as a parent or as their teacher, then they get to write it on construction paper and we cut it out in a general shape of a circle and add it to Mrs. Caterpillar. And this is a long wall in our apartment, so we definitely have room for all 26 letters. But Sophie is so thrilled to watch this caterpillar grow a little more every, not every day, but every few days or so. I'm actually standing on a chair while I'm showing you this, so I'll try not to fall off. But this caterpillar idea is from Now That I'm a Mother also, and you can find more stuff about the caterpillar idea too in her Instagram story highlights. So definitely go check that out. All right, back to some of the activities that I've been printing out and working on laminating. These still need to be cut out. There are four cards per page. They're called count and clip cards. And this is an example of why a clothespin comes in handy sometimes. These are actually made to use with a clothespin or some sort of a clip. Your child just counts objects, or in this case, it looks like mostly ducks, 
and then they have three options at the bottom of their card. So it's either nine ducks, seven ducks, or six ducks, and then they have to choose one of those options and just clip the clothespin to the side of the card. And that's just another great way to have an engaging counting or math activity. Here's a game called Catch a Rainbow, and this one is from filefolderfun.com. I still need to cut out all of these pictures on the right here. Actually, those giant hole punches would work really well for something like this. I printed out three of these in case Sophie wants to play with my husband and me at the same time but they just turn over the little picture and see what color it is and then put it in that spot on their rainbow sheet over here. And then once red is filled up, for instance, if they draw another picture that is red, they can't put it on their card anymore. And so you're trying to fill up your whole rainbow. I wanted to share two other things that we've been loving this school year. And actually I shared an entire homeschool haul and my beginning of the year homeschool organization before we moved to this apartment. So I can link that video as well for you just in case you're interested in seeing everything we got for this school year initially back in September or at the end of summer. But I wanted to share these items with you anyway, just in case you missed that video. So I have these character cards or character words as we call them that I got from an Etsy shop called September and Company and I will link these below because they are just darling. So these aren't the exact fruits of the spirit if you're familiar with those like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Uh, from the Bible, but they do have a lot of overlap with those values and there are Bible verses on the back that speak to each of these character traits that you want to foster in, of course, ourselves, but also in our kids. And I just love, first of all, how cute they are and how cute the artwork is, but they have a little definition on the back. So for instance, kindness says treating others in a way that I would like to be treated. And it has some I can action phrases here, like I can use good manners, I can help those who need help. These are practical and really cute and I think they encourage really good discussions with your kids. And these are good for pretty much any age. I did character words with my third grade students. My first year of teaching, I just created character word worksheets that we could discuss throughout the week. And then we had like a little mini character word quiz where they're basically talking about how they can put it into action at the end of the week. But I've been doing these character word cards with Sophie and she just really enjoys discussing them. And this set that I got comes with a little wooden holder so you can actually prop up the card and display it somewhere throughout the school week. The other item I wanted to share with you today is this game. It's called Head to Tail and you can buy it on Amazon. We've really enjoyed it because it's a three-piece puzzle. So not just a two-piece puzzle like the front end and back end of an animal, but it actually includes the middle as well, which I think is a step up for a child who is ready for something more than a two-piece puzzle. And they're self-correcting puzzles, puzzle pieces, so your child can't actually hook together a lion and a cow, for instance, um, it'll fit together perfectly once it is a good match. And these are real pictures of real animals, so they've been really fun for Sophie to work with. So I just wanted to include this in case you are looking for something for homeschool or even a gift idea for a toddler. I think I mentioned size sequencing cards earlier, but I love how this Fun With Mama website has some for different themes. So these Arctic Fox cards will be really fun because they're part of the polar animals theme. So then once I cut these out, Sophie can put them in order of the size of the Arctic Fox. I also love these simple counting puzzles. They're perfect for preschool or kindergarten age. And this one goes from number one through 11 and I'll cut it into strips and mix it all up. And while Sophie is looking at the numbers on the bottom and getting those in order, she's building a beluga whale. And this goes with that fun with mama's polar animals theme. I'm trying really hard not to want to laminate everything in my life right now because it's really satisfying and it's, it's really fun. I love it. But I wanted to say, in case you don't have a laminator, definitely buy a big pack of those page protectors that people use in binders because those work almost as well. Of course, it's not like sealed, but it definitely protects paper if you're playing with a little game board or some other activity. And those page protectors work well with dry erase markers too, usually. I am also a huge fan of this site called The Measured Mom, which I know I mentioned earlier, but these are a couple of the types of games that I actually used as a Title I teacher. This one is called The Counting Game, and it comes in a couple different themes, I guess, or styles. There's a teddy bear one where students or your child can count teddy bears. And then there's a version of the game where you are counting on your fingers or looking at these pictures where they are counting on their fingers. And I know these pages look really busy, like there's so much printed out on the page, but I've played this kind of game 
made by the measured mom so many times with students and they actually catch on really well and it works really well. So it's basically a game board where you play along this outside edge with your playing pieces and there's no start or end because in the middle it is actually five in a row bingo. And so you're constantly practicing whatever the skill is around the outside with the goal of getting bingo in the middle and that's how you know the game is done. So definitely check out themeasuredmom.com for games like this. She has a lot that are kind of made in this style. One of my all-time favorite sites for finding printables is called thisreadingmama.com and that's where I found this. I actually found this number cards page within her Valentine's Day themed packet, but I just wanted some number cards to have on hand. Those are so great to have on hand, so I'm glad I found them and I've got them laminated so I can just cut them out and have them ready for any kind of game. I forgot to show you this one. This is the 10 frames version of that counting game and 10 frames are super important. Okay, I'm really excited about this one. It's called Shape Man Size Sorting and it's from thisreadingmama.com and I have never used this one with students before. It might be a newer one, I'm not really sure. So it's called Shape Man because you are building a snowman but out of shapes and you just have to use one type of shape to build that snowman. So you need to find like a large bottom triangle, a medium middle triangle, and then the head triangle piece. And then they build maybe the hexagon one next. So the large hexagon, medium sized hexagon, and then that hexagon head over here. It's just so cute. And I think Sophie's gonna really love it. This is a great activity to print out and do with your child this winter too, because it's such a cute snowman theme. Here's another super cute cupcake counting game. This one you just cut apart these number cards and your child will draw a number and then they have to count that many cherries to put on this cupcake. This is another one I'm really excited to do with Sophie. It's called The Mitten I Wear in the Snow and it's by This Reading Mama. Everyone gets a hand game board of bare hands that desperately need mittens, which we understand here in Minnesota for sure because today's high was negative four degrees Fahrenheit. That was the high and we ran to Target and we were cold. So anyway, everyone gets a bare hand game board and you roll a die and you take that many mittens out of this stack of mittens. So I need to cut these apart, but then you place, like if you get six, you can place six mittens on your board and that starts to fill up your board. And then the next turn you get, maybe you get three and you fill up three more mittens. So the first person who fills their whole board with mittens wins. It's a cute winter game that would help your child get more familiar with a die. Or you, if you don't wanna do dot patterns, you could do a die that has numbers written on the outside or even number cards too, one through six. Here's another one that goes with that polar animals theme, but it could be used any time, of course. Um, these are cutouts at the bottom and on this page too, but this one's called What Comes Next, and so they're just looking at the pattern of these different polar animals, and then they can just place whatever one comes next right there. It's a simple pattern, but a really fun way to introduce it. And then this one's a little more complicated because the child has to fill in the pattern with one of these pieces at a different part of the pattern each time. So. I think Sophie's really going to enjoy these because she's really been loving patterns lately. These are from Fun With Mama. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it was inspirational to you. Who knows, maybe one of the games I shared today can become a new family favorite for you. If you like this style of video that has more of a homeschooling focus, give it a thumbs up below so then I know to make more like it. And if you're new here, I invite you to also subscribe so that you can stick around and see future videos. I share everything from homemaking, to homeschooling, day in the life type videos. We recently moved into an apartment, well kind of moved. I get into that in a life update a few videos back, so definitely check that out if you're curious about why I said kind of moved into an apartment. But I'm so glad you're here and thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.